One day I got a message from a Reddit user by the name of Kamel. He watched my video on facial recognition and mass surveillance and shared the problem he encountered. Kamel moved to a new place and decided to use a dating app called Tinder. Usually, Tinder gives the user a certain amount of swipes to match with another Tinder user. But when he used the app, Kamel noticed that his daily amount of swipes is significantly reduced, while at the same time, he only gets bad choices with options that he believes have low ranking. Kamel explained a bit about the business model of Tinder. They show users the potential of the app, and when these users start getting into it, Tinder limits their options, allowing less matches per day and worst possible matches. Kamel knows this because it happened to him in the past, but then it took a lot more than a few minutes until he ended up in this situation. His experience with Tinder led him to the conclusion that the app somehow recognizes him. Since he is in a new location, using a new device and logs in only from public internet spots, Kamel told me that he believes that Tinder uses a facial recognition system that manages to identify him and immediately shadow ban him. To me, this sounded too far-fetched. Tinder should not have enough photos of users to be able to recognize them automatically, and the fact that Kamel uses a different device from a different location cancels the option of Tinder's AI to limit its search range, which is necessary to reduce calculations. Kamel shared posts of others who experienced this problem and reached the same conclusion as him. And while Tinder officially denies using facial recognition on its users, this accusation repeats too many times to be dismissed. I promise to do whatever I can to help him, and together with my new Reddit friend, we decided to dig deeper. Me and Kamel were looking for more information about Tinder's ability to recognize returning users. It turned out that Tinder does keep a lot of data on its users. And this is where the story gets scary. Some of those who accused the dating app of using facial recognition pointed fingers to an AI system that is developed by Amazon. In case you're not familiar with the IT industry, the popularity of Amazon's cloud, also known as Amazon Web Services, put the company in the major league of tech corporations. The name Amazon is now mentioned together with giants like Facebook, Apple, Netflix, and Google. And many developers aspire to be employed by this tech pioneer and become an overworked shell of a human being who can proudly announce on their LinkedIn page that they were hired to work for Jeff Bezos. Amazon's artificial intelligence is called recognition. Like all face detection systems, it uses a convolutional neural network as its training algorithm. What makes this system special is the amount of data Amazon has access to. A principle that should be clear to you by now is that the more data a machine learning algorithm has, the bigger its potential. Amazon Web Services allows storage of more data than any other system. In addition, Amazon faced accusations of getting access to data it shouldn't access, such as surveillance footage and private photos. In general, big tech companies keep an incredible amount of data on us. We all know our devices film us at any time, but did you ever wonder where this data is stored? We can't know for sure that these accusations against Amazon are true, but in order to be able to beat this system, I'll have to assume the worst. Recognition is used by a lot of companies and law enforcement agencies, so there's probably a good reason for that. The clients of the system get the best product on the market. The designers of the system get more data to improve their product. Social credit system requires a centralized database and access to live footage, and it looks like Amazon can provide the platform for that. Me and Kamel got to work. We tried to find what we can on how modern facial recognition systems operate and tried every way we could think of to beat them. We modified images with photo editing software. 
we used AI software to change faces. But we learned that the massive amount of data that is kept on everybody allowed the tech industry to achieve impressive results. Today's face detection systems cannot be beaten by just covering one part of your face. Now, these systems use combinations of many classifiers. You could imagine a facial recognition system as a spaghetti strainer. By design, the product has holes in it to drain the water out. If we compare that to artificial intelligence, the system can't copy-paste the photo to find exact matches. This wouldn't work. Instead, just like the strainer, the AI lets some data slide out to improve the results. Now let's say that spaghettis are people. We learned that most of them will do exactly as they're told. If they need to stay still until they are eaten, that's exactly what they will do. But let's consider that you are a rebellious noodle, and you don't like the idea that you are about to get eaten. So you look for a hole big enough to slip through, and you manage to save yourself. Once the manufacturer of the product notices the flaw, he will fix the hole to be big enough to drain water, but too small for you to go through. Every time a hole is detected, it is redesigned so it can't be exploited. And we get to a situation where it becomes harder and harder to escape. Unfortunately, with the improvements in artificial intelligence, the tips I shared in my video on facial recognition will no longer work. Modern systems use face proportions to extract features that can be used for recognition. These features are detected using the Viola Jones algorithm that takes regions of an image and calculates the differences to find what features are useful for identification. These mathematical calculations make some of these features invisible to human eyes. So when trying to modify a face to trick a system, it will detect regions that you didn't cover. Avoiding detection used to be as easy as covering the area between your eyes. So data scientists trained AI to detect faces without using this part. Facial recognition used to be extremely fragile, so its designers made it learn to use more data points and made it harder to break. Every hole that was discovered in the strainer was adjusted to reduce the chance of exploiting it, which means that escaping it became a lot more difficult. Do you remember how in the 1990s you could hack a website by accessing its HTML code? So to hack one now, you would need tools that provide access to the site's backend. And just like cybersecurity companies pay hackers to find bugs in their systems, Amazon runs competitions to find flaws in its AI. Every bug that is found awards the developer who found it with some compensation. And Amazon instructs its engineers to fix the problem. This process improved the system to the point it became nearly impossible to fool it. And this is how it looks like. Hackathons with miserable people who waste their weekends on improving somebody else's product help with training the neural network and fix holes. We made a few attempts with registering new accounts on Tinder and Kamel made many changes to his photos, but was still shadow banned within minutes. Sometimes he managed to last a couple of hours, but always ended in the same place. Since this doesn't happen to new users, it does look like the AI was able to recognize him. Something to consider is that officially, when you ask a tech company to delete your data, it is required to do so. But the values that are associated with you to help with identification are not going anywhere. While images of you may not be on Amazon's servers, numbers representing features of your face can still be kept. Another problem you may encounter after modifying your face is that the modifications are not always consistent. If you uploaded two modified images, the Viola Jones algorithm will detect different features and might conclude that the faces don't belong to the same person. If that happens, your profile might get flagged as a fake profile. This could be the explanation for why Kamel was shadow banned after a few hours. Some of you watching this video might think that Kamel should just quit dating apps altogether, but it was clear to us both that this is much bigger than that. 
The use of face recognition on social media is nothing but a pilot before applying it to the digital prison that is called social credit score. Amazon keeps improving their product before taking over every city and using it against all of us. So we kept trying. Adversarial attacks used to be a good technique against facial recognition, so I decided to try this approach. But AI developers found a solution for that too. In my video on mass surveillance, I mentioned that systems limit their search range by associating people to locations. This means that the AI that tries to identify you will look for a match with those who walk or live around the place you were filmed in. This approach is used to reduce calculations, and because when there are more faces to search, there's a higher chance of false identification. Kamel said that he was recognized after moving to a completely different location. This could mean that Amazon's systems are powerful enough to be able to identify faces without having to optimize their search. Could Armilus and his army even be beaten at this point? Feeling like I failed my friend, I did what every failure would do and turned to Reddit. I posted what I managed to find on Amazon's recognition in hopes of finding experts that will help me with beating it. But unfortunately, my question didn't get the attention I was aiming for, and the few responses that I got didn't get me anywhere. I was ready to accept defeat when Kamel came up with a new idea. The system knows when faces are modified by image editing software, but what if we used parts of different faces and put it on our own image? What if, for example, I created a new persona of an oriental businessman, trying to reverse the changes that I made in order to reveal my true identity will result with too many false positives because Asians look the same. What is it? What's in Kanichiwa, Red Dragon, Beijing, Hong Kong, I see the in Hong Kong, the sushi, when I said, Oh, I see the I saw Red Dragon, because I'm not going to see me. Oh, you speak a Chinese, Ho Chi Minh City, oh no, no. That didn't work either, so come and purchase Amazon's product. I told him that the free version that is open to private users is not likely to be as good as the real thing, but Kamel wanted to see what he can find. And after a lot of tests and image manipulations, we actually managed to cancel enough features for the system to not be able to identify a face while humans still can. Me and Kamel found a hole in the spaghetti strainer big enough for him to go through. This hole reduces the similarity level below the threshold needed to conclude that there is a match. And if he chooses to, my friend could make a new Tinder profile and not get shadow banned. The thing is that sharing the solution here means it will get fixed immediately. And since I don't want to help Armilus with building a digital prison for humanity, I chose to honor my friend's request and not talk about the flaw that we were able to exploit. So holes big enough to be used for escaping can still be found in AI systems, but it's getting harder to find them.